Hello and welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm Stacey Sims, and every other Friday, I bring you a short episode with the top diabetes stories and headlines happening now. In the News is brought to you by Edgepark. Simplify your diabetes journey with Edgepark. Quick note before we jump in, the American Diabetes Association Scientific Sessions is this weekend. That means new research studies will be released, technology announced, and likely lots of news will be made. I'm recording this before the conference starts, so please be sure to follow me on social media for breaking news and updates. And if there's enough going on, we may have an additional in the news next week. Our top story right now, no more insulin pens for South Africa as the pharmaceutical industry shifts production priorities to blockbuster weight loss drugs. Novo Nordisk, the company that has supplied South Africa with insulin in pens for a decade, opted not to renew its contract. No other company has bid on it. Novo's Ozempic and WeGoV, which are widely prescribed in the U.S. for diabetes and weight loss, are sold in single-use pens produced by many of the same contracted manufacturers who make the multi-dose insulin pens. And as you know, these newer drugs cost a lot more than insulin. Novo dominates the global market for insulin in pens and has supplied South Africa since 2014. Eli Lilly, the other major producer, has indicated it is struggling to keep up with the significant demand for its weight loss drug, ZepBound. By the way, this is all in the New York Times. I will link this up like I link up all of my sources over at diabetes-connections.com. Just click on this episode's homepage. Novo tells the Times it is continuing to supply insulin in vials to South Africa, but pens are much easier to use and more precise. In fact, the vial system was phased out for South Africa in 2014. I posted about this already on social, and I said this is a canary in the coal mine. Everybody going to ADA should be asking Novo and Lily about this. GLP medications are fantastic, but insulin cannot be left behind. It's happening now in South Africa. It can happen in other countries, and we shouldn't wait to care about it until it happens where we live. Other news? Once a week, basal insulin for type 1 and type 2 comes to Canada. Novo Nordisk announced that its version of insulin Icadec will be available starting June 30th. They are calling it a weekly. I promise I didn't make that up. Canada is the first country to get the product. A weekly works as a time release of insulin over the course of a week. It is more expensive. And Canada's Drug Agency, which assesses drugs and recommends whether they should qualify for reimbursement under public drug plans, is still doing the math here. We told you recently an FDA advisory board passed on approving this for people with type 1, saying the risk of low blood sugar was too great, but the full FDA has not yet weighed in. The prevalence of people over 65 living with type 1 diabetes went up 180% in the past 30 years. That's an increase of 1.3 million in 1990 to 3.7 million in 2019. Data included people from more than 200 countries. Now, dying from type 1 slipped by about 1% every year in the same time period. The mortality for people over 65 went down 25%. These researchers say the disease no longer contributes to a reduced life expectancy for many people due to medical care improvements. We're hearing more about the limited rollout of Omnipod 5 with the Dexcom G7. This was announced in February, but it just seems to really be getting underway. A few people have received emails that folks new to the system will be getting this first, but that at the end of July, current users will get a controller update so they can use G7 with the current pods. We'll have more on this soon. I don't have a link for you, but thanks to everybody who sent me your emails. Very much appreciated. New life is possible for the Korean insulin pump Eopatch. This is a competitor to the Omnipod. A court has killed an injunction that meant the company, EO Flow, could not bring the patch pump to the U.S. Last year, the court initially granted that injunction, and Medtronic backed out of their acquisition plan. No word from Medtronic if the deal's back on, or if another company may work to bring EO patch to the U.S. The Secure Simplicity patch is now FDA cleared for up to four days of wear. This is a mechanical patch pump that replaces fast-acting injections. This is an extension from three days to four. Now each patch replaces up to 12 injections, making it the longest wearable insulin delivery patch. The company says that's 1,000 fewer shots a year. Marketed mostly to people with type 2 who use insulin, the company says nearly 90% of patients using Secure Simplicity reported following their insulin regimen better 
as compared to multiple daily injections. A warning from Roche, which says dangerous counterfeits of its diabetes medical devices ended up for sale on Amazon. Roche accused manufacturers and sellers based in India of selling counterfeit test strips for the AccuCheck glucometers. This is part of a federal lawsuit. Roche says the counterfeit test strips are expired or nearly expired that are repackaged with counterfeit labels that have Roche's registered U.S. trademarks and fake expiration dates. After the suit was filed, the judge granted Roche's request for a temporary restraining order to stop the defendants from selling the products. The Amazon stores that were offering the products appear to have been taken down. Right back to the news in just a minute. But first, this episode is brought to you by Edge Park. Take control of your diabetes with a broad range of diabetes management supplies from Edge Park. The latest diabetes supplies and continuous glucose monitors from top brands simplify blood sugar management. Edge Park accepts most insurance plans and Medicare and Medicare Advantage cover certain devices. Plus, Edge Park takes care of the insurance paperwork to make ordering as seamless as possible. Go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Edge Park logo to learn more about Edge Park's diabetes supplies and CGM devices. Back to the news now. And Summer Olympics this year may be a showcase for CGM. Abbott is sponsoring a Dutch long-distance runner. He'll be wearing the Libre. Other athletes are using the CGMs in training and may wear as allowed in their sports. There isn't a lot of proof yet that these devices make a big difference for people without diabetes. But of course, these high-level athletes are looking for any edge possible. So expect to hear a lot more about this in the lead-up to the Olympics July 26th especially now that both Abbott and Dexcom are launching over-the-counter, no prescription needed, versions of their CGMs. And that is in the news for now. Next week, I'll have a lot more from ADA, some studies that you will definitely want to hear about. And on the Type 2 show, we've got a really important episode for you. What do you do if you can't get your Manjaro, your Ozempic, if you've been taking these medications and seeing success, and then we know the supply is really tough right now, If you can't get it, what do you do? This isn't just about calling pharmacies. This is about medically. How do you dose? What else can you take? And how should you start up again if you're able to get your medication after stopping? Looking forward to seeing some of you at ADA. Safe travels, everybody. I'm Stacey Sims. I'll see you back here soon. Until then, be kind to yourself. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.